Growth isn't pretty. It's messy, it's imperfect, it's painful and uncomfortable, and there's no way to bypass that discomfort to get the results that you seek. In this episode of Potent Truth, I discuss the discomfort of growth. Tune in and learn the two forms of discomfort that we experience as human beings, how your self-preservation mechanisms are holding you hostage in your comfort zone, how to move through your resistance to uncertainty and pain, how your unconscious mind fights to keep you safe and stuck, how to navigate through the point of exhaustion that comes with being devoted to your growth, and five potent questions to help you identify where you're still living in your comfort zone. Now, as a reminder, my book, Potent Leadership, is available on Amazon and on Audible. You can grab the book at potentleadership.com. You can also walk into your favorite local bookstore and have them order you a copy today. Now, whether you are a loyal listener or a brand new listener, Thank you for being here. And I would truly appreciate you taking a moment to download a few episodes and drop a rating and review on iTunes. Every single download rating and review helps get this podcast out to more people around the world. Now it is time to lean into the discomfort of growth. Beyond the Narrative Underneath the veil of illusion and deep within your center, therein lies potent truth. Welcome to Potent Truth, where today's leaders, change makers, and light carriers come together to question the narrative, arrive at potent truth, and lead with sovereignty. What is potency? It's who you are beneath the masks, facades, and protective gear. It's the medicine humanity yearns for, cries out for, prays for, and needs. Your potency is what sets you apart, magnetizes your following, and creates movements. Join me, Ruby Fremont, for weekly guidance, channeled messages, and potent conversations that will take you on a journey of self-discovery. I am here to guide you to a place of unraveling the programming that's been keeping us stuck for generations, unlocking potent truth and expressing it through sovereign leadership. It's time for change. It's time for potent truth. Hey leaders, and welcome to another episode of Potent Truth, where today, we're going to get a little uncomfortable because as far as I can see, humanity needs to relearn the importance of our discomfort, that our discomfort actually plays a significant role in our growth. Now, during these times, the only pandemic that I see is the tight grip that so much of humanity has on their comfort zones. People claim to be fighting for safety when really they're fighting to remain comfortable, staying exactly where they're at. People claim to be fighting for science when really they're fighting to remain comfortable with what they think they know. People are literally living in fear. And that fear is keeping them stuck in their comfort zones. And since you're listening to this specific podcast, you may feel different about what I just shared. However, I assure you that all human beings, every single one of us tends to navigate or tends to gravitate towards what makes them feel more comfortable versus the discomfort. We all do this. Now, there are two forms of discomfort that we experience and that I want to address. There is the discomfort of uncertainty and the discomfort of pain, whether it be physical, emotional, mental, or spiritual pain. And when it comes to your conscious growth, notice how I say conscious growth and evolution, both forms of discomfort are involved and 
completely necessary. But this doesn't mean that your comfort zone isn't uncomfortable. It's just that you have become so accustomed to living in discomfort that you've become stuck in that state. So what you actually think is comfortable is pretty uncomfortable, but you're not willing to get even more uncomfortable to find your way through that mess. Now, let me back up. In my teens through my early thirties, I was living in pure discomfort. I was addicted to my emotional suffering. And by my late twenties, I was using drugs and alcohol to cope. But the thing is, is I was strangely comfortable. It was like my dark and dense emotional state felt like a huge, comfy blanket that kept me super safe. I had built an entire identity around my suffering. I am depressed. I am anxious. I am this. I am that. That became my identity. It's like when people identify themselves with their physical ailments, but, but we are so much more than that, right? It wasn't until I hit rock bottom in 2012 that I was willing to get even more uncomfortable by taking action to navigate through my emotional suffering instead of continuing to blanket it with drugs and alcohol. And let me tell you, that journey was fucking tough. I challenged my physical body through devotion to working out and eating healthy because I was determined to live inside a healthier body and not a drug addicted body. I challenged my mind by throwing myself head first into the personal development space, a space that I had never really fully immersed myself in. I got sober. I learned how to feel my emotions for what felt like the first time ever in my entire life. I learned how to just be alone with my thoughts, with myself, without having to distract myself. This is the discomfort that I'm talking about, the discomfort of growth. And let's be honest, okay? It will never get easier. You will just become better at navigating the discomfort of growth. Now, when working with new clients, I see, I immediately see their resistance to discomfort, to doing things differently, to being different. And yet at the same time, I can see their desire to experience something different in their life and leadership. And I always urge my clients to view their resistance, whatever that resistance is, as an invitation to lean in versus run away. So ask yourself this question, what is it that you're really resisting? When it comes to your growth, what is it that you're really resisting? When it comes to your discomfort, what is it that you're really resisting? And again, it'll always come down to two things, the discomfort of uncertainty and the discomfort of pain. These discomforts come from your very human need to keep yourself safe. We as human beings are built with self-preservation mechanisms to protect ourselves and to keep ourselves feeling safe. Uncertainty is about not knowing, right? It's about not knowing. And if you don't know the exact outcome of a situation, your unconscious mind will automatically sound the alarms telling you this isn't safe. This isn't safe. And let me assure you that your unconscious mind does not want you to experience pain at all. Whether it be physical, emotional, mental, or spiritual pain, your self-preservation mechanisms will automatically kick in at the onset of any form of pain. Just think about what happens when you place your finger on a hot stovetop. You will automatically remove your finger. And this is a very good thing because it prevents you from getting burned. This is the self-preservation technique that is keeping you safe. So it's a completely unconscious reaction. And in many situations such as this, it's a very good thing. But when it comes to your growth, these automated autopilot self-preservation mechanisms are holding you back. 
your unconscious mind doesn't want to put you in situations that feel unsafe. And this is where the invitation comes in. The invitation to lean in with your conscious mind, not your unconscious mind, to lean in with your conscious mind and make a conscious decision in that moment to navigate through your resistance to uncertainty or to pain. Think about what happens when you take that first step into a cold plunge. For those of you who have done this, you'll know exactly what happens. For those of you who have not yet done this, just imagine what would happen when you take that first step into an ice bath, a cold plunge, icy cold waters. Well, your autopilot response would be to step back out. You'll dip your toe in, be like, oh, too cold, pull it back out. Yet with a cold plunge or an ice bath, you're doing it as a way to challenge yourself. It's a conscious decision to navigate through that resistance that you're feeling in that moment by dropping your entire body into the cold as fuck water. And again, anyone who's ever done a cold plunge knows that there is no way you're going to get in that tub or that plunge one toe at a time. Like you just have to go right in. You just have to step in and drop down as fast as you can before the autopilot kicks in. Right. And is it easy? Hell no. And it's not meant to be easy. Whether it's your physical, emotional, mental, or spiritual growth, all of it comes with a degree of discomfort that is necessary. Otherwise you're just living in your comfort zone, avoiding your edges while playing into your resistance and letting your resistance win. This is one of the many reasons, if not the greatest reasons why I love working out. If you follow me on Instagram, you probably already know this. I love working out to me. My time in the gym is my time to challenge my body, mind, and spirit. It's not just about my physical self in that gym. It's about my mind, my spirit, my emotional self, all of it. Whether I'm challenging myself to jump a 26 inch box when I'm used to jumping a 24 inch box or challenging myself to run five minutes longer than usual or lift 10 pounds heavier than usual or do more reps than usual. Within each of these challenges, I am met with my resistance. It doesn't get any easier. The discomfort of not knowing whether I can safely clear a 26 inch box or the discomfort uh, that I'm going to feel when I run longer, lift heavier, or do more reps than usual, right? Because there's a physical discomfort that I'm going to feel. My time at the gym truly serves as my opportunity to show myself what's possible when I lean into my discomfort versus running away from it. And the same goes for you and your personal growth and evolution. This shit isn't easy. It's not easy to challenge your fears and your belief systems and current paradigms. It's not easy to face your traumas and your wounds again and again and again and again and be like, shit, I thought I already worked on that. (laughs) It's fucking hard. And in my experience of coaching hundreds of leaders, I have found that most people reach this point of exhaustion in their growth. They reach a point where they just want things to be and feel easy. I know this because I've been there many times. Now you may have found yourself here a few times, or perhaps you're there right now, tired of challenging your fears and your belief systems and your paradigms tired of facing your traumas and your wounds, tired of doing all the work all the time, only to meet new depths of your fears, belief systems, traumas, and wounds. God, this shit is so fucking exhausting. I see you and I feel you. And I encourage you to keep leaning in. Growth is our only constant. However, we can also become very resistant to our growth due to our resistance to discomfort. So wherever you find yourself today, just take a moment to audit your life and your lifestyle and even your leadership where, and and write these questions down. If you're not driving, if you're driving, just mark this minute mark and write these questions down when you stop driving, but ask yourself the following questions. 
where have you become too comfortable? In what ways are you remaining inside your comfort zone? What are you really resisting? And what do you need to continue leaning in to your discomfort? In what ways are you continuing to challenge yourself physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually? These are all very important questions to ask yourself because your growth, your evolution as a human, as a leader is your responsibility. And it's crucial as a leader that you own this responsibility. Now, I have been observing a lot in the leadership space over the past two years, as you probably have as well. And one of the things I've observed are people claiming to be leaders, yet they continue to operate in the exact same ways, doing the exact same things in a time where things have drastically changed. There's like an obvious dissonance between how they're showing up and the world that we are living in. And the truth is they're scared to change. They're letting their unconscious mind take the wheel, avoiding any form of discomfort that comes from this opportunity for growth. They're letting their self-preservation techniques and mechanisms take the lead. Because that's what this is. They're trying to keep face. They're trying to keep their followers. They're trying to keep everything the same because they know that the same has worked. And truly speaking, a lot of them are probably experiencing things that aren't working anymore in their business because of this dissonance. There is a misalignment. This is not leadership. What we need right now in our world are leaders who are courageous enough to lean into the discomfort of growth. Leaders who are willing to change, to shift, to consciously evolve who they're being so they can continue to be of service. We need leaders who are willing to get uncomfortable and to be with their discomfort. As I say in my book, Potent Leadership, Influencers paint a pretty picture, but leaders pave the way. And in order to pave that way, you've got to build the way brick by fucking brick. You've got to put in the work, make the effort, lean into your discomfort of growth and surpass your self-perceived limitations. Growth is truly edgy. It's scary and challenging and extremely uncomfortable. And yet at the same time, so rewarding. And I know you've experienced this. The discomfort is the path to growth. It's the only way that we grow. Now, many people will bypass or want to bypass the discomfort and just claim to be at an elevated state of growth, but true growth True growth is experienced in one's presence. It's visceral. When someone has really put in the work to grow, when someone knows how to be in their discomfort, you can literally feel it. You can feel the depth of people's growth in their presence. Bypassing the discomfort is super tempting because who wants pain, right? Who wants uncertainty? Who wants to be uncomfortable? But cutting corners will never, ever, ever yield you the results that you seek. Just think about the butterfly and the cocoon. So the butterfly, in order to emerge from its cocoon, it must undergo a struggle. The struggle is what strengthens its wings so that it can fly once it breaks free from the cocoon. So if you were to cut open a butterfly cocoon and help it release itself, the butterfly wouldn't be able to fly because you bypassed its discomfort, the discomfort necessary for it to develop its wings. Your growth is your responsibility. And as a leader, it's your divine duty to devote yourself to your growth, to your healing, to your evolution. So you can continue to serve with depth. 
You've got to release the tight grip that you have on your comfort zone. Start cultivating a healthy relationship with growth and being uncomfortable. Challenge yourself daily, mind, body, and spirit. Face your resistance whenever it comes up and look at that resistance as an invitation and just get uncomfortable. Be with your discomfort. Just be with it without trying to do anything with it, without trying to avoid it, without trying to take a shortcut or bypass it. Because leadership isn't about being comfortable. It's about growth. It's about paving the way brick by fucking brick. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of Potent Truth, where I am taking you on a journey to challenge illusion and lead with sovereignty. Now, as a reminder, I do have a book and it's pretty fucking dope. If you don't have a copy yet, head to potentleadership.com and grab your copy today. You can also go on Amazon, wherever you live and order a copy of Potent Leadership. Or if you don't want to support the Amazon devil, then you can choose to go into your local bookstore and just ask them to order a copy in for you. And they will. Plus that also helps get my book out into more areas around the world. Um, you can also download potent leadership on audible. And let me tell you, it is such an activation. So if you love, if you're an auditory person, if you love audible, then go grab it on audible and wherever you get the book, whether it's Amazon or audible, please do me a solid and leave a rating and review as an author. Let me tell you, it, it's so funny. I think a lot of people think authors make a ton of money. We don't make shit. I make like three bucks less than three bucks on each book sold. Okay. I, I didn't do this for the money. I did this to get this message out into the world. And what can help me get this message out into the world are these ratings and reviews. So please drop a rating and review. And if you appreciate this podcast, you can also support me by dropping a rating and review on iTunes and share this episode with a friend. You can also, if you have yet to do so, connect with me on social media. My handle is at I am Ruby. The places I tend to hang out the most right now are Instagram and Twitter. You can also join my Telegram community called Awake and Aware. Just go to rubyframon.com forward slash Telegram. That link and everything else is going to be in the show notes. So keep an eye on for keep an eye out for the show notes. And you can also text hashtag potent truth to 1781-336-0160 to receive weekly potent reminders. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being a loyal listener. Thank you so much for your support with the book. If you have the book, please share a copy of you, a photo of you with the book and your social media and tag me at I am Ruby and use the hashtag potent leadership for a chance to get feature, featured. And then finally, make sure you check back on Monday for a brand new episode of potent truth. Aho leaders.